Welcome back to Newsmakers. On the panel, Jamie Goff, Cheryl Sutherland and Andrew Gunn. Hell's Pizza has zeroed in on Hanover Finance's parallel universe as 17,000 investors fret about their fortunes. The company's founders continue leading the life of King Farouk. Uh, the pizza company has printed billboards of their greed pizza alongside a mugshot of Mr Hodgson. And they even took their hoarding for a drive-by past his $30 million palace under construction in Paratai Drive. Hanover is now, of course, threatening legal action. Um, should Hell's Pizza be applauded? Cheryl? Oh, absolutely. And like the Gilbert and Sullivan song, I've actually got a little list. So, um, like Mike Perot, I've got the um, Prime Minister's phone number, and I'm actually going to ring the Prime Minister and give him a little list to pass on to Hell's Pizza, who are going to do lots more billboards with lots more people's names on it. I would like to say more, but my legal advisor has assured me that it could get me into trouble, not to mention your good self, Mike, and CTV. So, that will be it from me on this particular topic. You're a very well-meaning, generous soul. Thank you. You've thought about all the possibilities here. I have. Yes. <laughs> Andrew, what do you think of this? They're very crafty, aren't they, Hell Pizza? Because yes. here we are talking about them on TV, yes. and it's like for nothing. Yes. Um, uh, and I must say, in the past, I've, I've thought that some of their campaigns were a little offensive and they didn't need to do it, but in this case, go for it. Mm. He's greedy. Mm. He is. <laughs> is this striking the right chord with New Zealand? I think, I, look, New Zealanders hate to see someone um, do the dirty on someone and get away with it, mm. which may or may not have. Yes, we're not suggesting anything. No, 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 no. I'll leave that to you <laughs> to decide. Um, what you've got to actually look at though, and a good business is always taking advantage of an opportunity, and I think Hell's Pizzas have done this. They've seen there's an opportunity there, and hey, if they get, if they get sued for it, it was probably uh, well worth it, and I'd say that the marketing value for dollar that they have got out of it would have been well worth it. I'm very tempted to discuss the pros and cons of greediness when it comes to defamation, but we won't go there. <laughs> but in a general sense, can I ask you, Andrew, do you think this talk of legal action is just bluster? Uh, well, who can tell when you've got, a th when you got 30 mils to throw around, you know, mm. what's another 100,000 for a QC? <laughs> um, but uh, again, you know, it's, I suppose he... Well, it's not going to go down very well in the court of public opinion, is it, mm. if he comes out swinging? Mm. Um, so, mm. who can say? Indeed. But it's another world. It is another world. He and tried to brush it off though, did you hear that? Oh, he tried the pizza to be put away. Well, I mean, pizza suck anyway. Oh. <laughs> Please, anyway. yes. Um, like speaking them. of other worlds, let us go to Northland. Te Tai Tokarau. There's another hui this weekend and of course this will seal the fate of Hone Harawera. Um, it would appear the Māori Party are on the verge of capitulating. All of that big strong talk a couple of weeks ago. What's happened with that, Cheryl? What should they do? Your advice to the Māori Party? My advice is fire the men. I think they're vacillated. I think they look weak. Mm. I think they look as though they support um, anti any other race but um, themselves um, syndrome. The Human Rights Commission have been conspicuously absent as well. The whole thing's just absolutely appalling. If I sent an email like that um, accusing, say, um, a Maori person or a Chinese person or something rather like that, mm. I would be um, hauled up before the Human Rights Commission before I could bat any of my very long eyelashes. So um, I to feel very strongly that there's very much a double standard here. Okay. It's just PC gone mad again. Quick comment? Yeah, it really is. Um, when you say that, Cheryl, I, I was just visualising, imagine that someone who's, who's not a minister but a part of the government, Nikki Wagner, gets an email from a Maori person uh, unhappy about the way something's being handled and she called them a black mother effer. Can mm. you imagine the outrage there? Mm. She wouldn't have a job today and I'm bemused that uh, Hone Harawera does. Mm. I, th yeah. I think, and I know you said a quick one, but I, I did hear, I got an email the other day and I quite liked it actually. I'll share it with you. It was, uh, it said, Dear Grim Reaper, I would like to tell you and uh, voice my disgust that you took away my favourite actor in Patrick Swayze. You then took away my favourite dancer and singer in Michael Jackson. I'm writing to remind you that my favourite politician is Hone Harawera. Kind regards. <laughs> um, I've got, I quite like I've got 30 seconds, Andrew. Uh, no, I don't have anything more to add, uh, apart from it's, it seems to be a case of Hone, I shrunk the credibility. <laughs> <laughs> uh, free shot time. Who deserves a plague and who deserves a poke? In the traditional sense of the word, uh, from the week. <laughs> Cheryl. Um, well, I'm going to actually going to um, pass accolades on to our politicians who have actually passed a bill um, which says that 
um, provocation will no longer be a defence for murder, which mm -hmm. I think is brilliant. And um, I've actually got another bouquet. It's for whoever thought up the headline in the press this morning, Secret Squad Goes Commando. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yes. Uh, Jamie. Yeah, there are some groups. Actually, uh, from the press as well, I saw in there in the weird entertainment sort of things, there was an Asian man that um, had, a, had a wedding organised with his anime computer Nintendo girlfriend, a game where you wine and dine a fantasy sort of character. <laughs> So bizarre, this man has no life mm -hmm. and he gets the brick back Very good. for being weird. Nice. <laughs> I've got about 10 seconds, Andrew. Tip top, not for making the ice cream containers smaller at the same price, but by giving us some ridiculous uh, 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 excuse for the fact that, oh, people actually like less ice cream, but more of the fiddly less bits. Less is more. <laughs> yes, is oh, no, they don't. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's more is always better. Indeed. Uh, the pick of the week. It's been a long, tough year for workers, hasn't it? And Christmas is still a month away, but if you find yourself going beyond the call of duty, as this worker is, you really do need a break. This really is taking multitasking to a very unsavoury level, don't you think? <laughs> um, the Newsmakers poll, last week's question, should all citizens initiated referenda be made binding? 59% of you said yes, 41 no, the prize winner B. Deans. This week's question, has the right decision been made uh, in closing Aurangi School? Yes or no? Email newsmakers at ctv.co.nz, vote on the web, mikeyardley.com. You can use the post, PO Box 1100 Christchurch, do so and you'll be in to win these very timely festive treats. Our Haley's Yuletide album, Christmas Magic, and a pack and save gift voucher. Good luck. Now, of course, we have one more footy game. This weekend, All Blacks France, you've been bottling your anticipation all week, Cheryl. What's going to happen on Sunday? Well, I'm going to watch a lot of French men's tight behinds, I hope. Oh. Apart from that, Cheryl. it's up to you. Oh. Shameless. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie Goff, thank you very much for joining Pleasure, us. Thank you for having me. Andrew Gunn and Cheryl Sutherland. Thank Have you. a great weekend. Good night.